All right, welcome back. We've just been talking about uh, the Elizabethan state in the context of Hamlet, and now we're going to be moving on to talk about uh, religion in the world of, uh, in the world of Hamlet. Uh, more specifically, the church. And so, the English Reformation, we have Henry VIII, through the, his acts of supremacy, made him the protector and only supreme head of the church and clergy of England. The monasteries were dissolved and their assets seized. seized. Catholicism was made illegal. Following his death and the short reign of Edward VI, his daughter Mary I reverted England to Catholicism. The accession of Elizabeth saw a return to uh, Protestantism. And while her acts of supremacy and act of unification weren't too harsh, her laws became increasingly aggressive to Catholics. So this is a very violent period up until 1558, where we have, uh, in that period, just before, in, in Henry's reign, we have England being Catholic, then it becoming Protestant, then it reverting back to Catholicism, and then Elizabeth making it Protestant again. And this is only a couple of generations. And so in the time of Shakespeare, we've got to remember that uh, Shakespeare's father was born a Catholic. And that was common at the time. So we have a world that's really struggling with this difference. And one of the key things about that difference is a new way of thinking about death. The new Protestant faith eliminated ideas of purgatory. The belief that dead can communicate and even intercede for the living world was prohibited. Catholic rites were no longer essential. The outward shows of mourning and Catholicism were gone. And this left an anxiety for the bereaved in Protestant England. So at the start of Hamlet, we see this problem. In, in Act 1, Scene 2, we, say, we see Hamlet dressed all in black. That there's a problem of grief. That the Protestant world doesn't allow us uh, to, um, to grieve in the way that, they, that people previously had. And the play has a real um, ambiguity, a real ambivalence about the Catholicism and Protestantism in the play. We can talk about uh, more about that in future videos. And Hamlet presents, though, this problematic conflict between the old and the new religions. Hamlet and Horatio study at Wittenberg, which is the, is the, um, the university where Martin Luther studied. The ghost of Hamlet's father represents a Catholic worldview. He is a Catholic ghost, in a, in a sense. In fact, his whole existence is part of is, it arises more out of Catholic doctrine. But in this period, though, we have the emergence of humanism, a rationalist outlook or system of thought attaching prime importance to the human rather than divine or supernatural characters. In Hamlet's soliloquy in in, uh, in scene two, Act two, scene two, what a piece of work is man! How noble in reason! How infinite in faculty! Is an expression of this humanism. And the Renaissance saw the recovery of classical and Greek Latin classical Greek and Latin texts that had been lost to the Middle Ages. They were motiv scholars were motivated by an educational and political ideal called humanitas. This is the idea that all the capabilities and virtues peculiar to humans should be studied and developed to their fullest extent. One of the interesting things in this period is Michel de Montaigne's essays basically inventing a new genre that all high school students love, and that is the essay. And this had a direct impact on Hamlet through the development of the soliloquy as one of those dramatic conventions. You see, the essay as a form was about the writer coming to terms with their own thoughts, their own philosophical thoughts, their own thoughts about the world. They're talking to themselves oftentimes rather than to a, a, a wider audience. And so Shakespeare uh, was influenced by Montaigne, and we see this in the soliloquies. And so Hamlet's soliloquies lend to this idea of Hamlet being the first modern man. His soliloquies become this early experiment with the essay form that, uh, that Montaigne had established. And so in summary of the three videos altogether, Shakespeare's plays give voice to the spirit of the time in which they're created. The period was at once a time of turmoil and a golden period for new ideas, culture and exploration. And the anxieties that emerged from the English Reformation can be found in Hamlet and the emergence of humanism found its way into the ideas of Shakespeare as well as in his development of the genre, especially through the influence of the essay form upon his development of the soliloquy. And so that finishes uh, this introduction to the world of Shakespeare and his context. And so it is intended only to be an introduction. This, is, uh, this isn't um, as much detail as we could go in, but there's a lot more you can explore online through podcasts and things like that.
And so good luck with that.